this is the third video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology network attached storage device. While there are a number of different makes and models of NAS to choose from, more than likely you decided on a Synology NAS because it offers a good mixture of performance and functionality. So in this video, we're going to take a tour of the Synology NAS that we will be using in this series as we want to familiarize ourselves with its many indicator lights, switches, ports and connectors. On the front of most models of Synology NAS, you will find a power button. This button can be used to either switch our NAS on or safely switch it off. While switching on our NAS is simply a case of pressing the power button, in order to safely switch off our Synology NAS, we can either use the shutdown command in the Disk Station Manager software or press and hold down the power button on the front of our NAS for roughly 5 seconds or until we hear a beep. Our NAS will now safely power itself down. Above the power button we have a USB 3 port. While not all models of Synology NAS will have a USB port on the front of their case, having a USB port positioned on the front of your NAS can make tasks such as file transfers and making backups a little easier. So if you've not yet purchased your NAS, it is worth making sure that you have this feature on the model of NAS that you're looking to buy. Next, directly above our USB port, we have a series of LED indicator lights for each of the hard drive bays on our NAS. While we will be looking at fitting hard drives to our NAS in the next video in this series, these indicator lights will provide us with basic information about the status of our hard drives, including if they're being accessed or if they have a fault. Next, we have the status LED, which as the name suggests, will give us an indication as to the state of our NAS. So for example, if the LED is solid green, we have an indication that our hardware is running normally. But if the status light was to start flashing orange, this could be an indication that there is a problem with a hard drive or volume, the station manager has not been installed, or that we have a configuration that has been lost. You may also find that your model of NAS has an alert LED. This LED will basically provide the same notifications as a NAS with just a status LED. So if the alert LED starts to flash orange or green, it could signify that there's a problem with a drive or volume, disk station manager has not been installed, or that a configuration has been lost. You will find that most models of Synology desktop NAS do not internally host a power supply unit. So at the rear of this NAS, we have a port for a power brick. Above the power port, we have two eSATA ports. These ports can be used to add external storage capacity to our NAS, either by using Synology's own make of storage expansion units, or by using an external hard drive with an eSATA connector. To the right of the eSATA ports, we have a Kensington security slot, which is part of a really simple anti-theft system designed to prevent someone from just picking up our NAS and walking away with it. Next, we have a recessed reset switch, which can be used to either reset the administrator's account on our NAS or perform a full system reset. Then to the left of our reset switch, we have another USB 3 port. Like the USB port on the front of our NAS, this port can be used to plug devices such as printers or external hard drives into our NAS. Finally, on the back of our NAS, we have four 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. You will find that different models of NAS will have different numbers of Ethernet ports. So while this NAS has four Ethernet ports, other models may only have one. The main reason why a NAS will have more than one network port is for something called link aggregation. Link aggregation will allow us to combine multiple Ethernet ports to increase the bandwidth of our NAS and provide redundancy should one of its Ethernet ports fail. It's also worth noting that while 10 gigabit Ethernet ports are starting to gain in popularity, at the time of posting this video, most models of Synology NAS still predominantly use only 1 gigabit Ethernet. However, as our NAS will mostly be accessed via Wi-Fi, a 1 gigabit Ethernet connection will be more than adequate for the speed of our network and its users. 
If you think that 10 gigabit Ethernet is something that you will want to use, make sure that your NAS either has a 10 gigabit Ethernet port or supports the ability to fit a 10 gigabit network expansion card. The system software used in all models of Synology NAS is something called DSM or Distation Manager. While the current version of DSM is version 7 and as a minimum requires 1 gigabyte of RAM in order to run, the more RAM the system software has at its disposal, the better it will be able to perform. It's also worth noting that if you intend to run virtual machines or Docker, along with using the right type of processor, you need to make sure that you have enough RAM to run these virtual systems. So on models of Synology NAS that use Intel processors, you may find that there is a way to add more RAM to your NAS. Finally, on the bottom of our NAS, we have two bays for a couple of M.2 SSDs. While you might think that these SSD slots are for expanding the storage of your NAS with faster solid state drives, these SSD slots are actually only used for something called cache acceleration. The idea of cache acceleration is to improve the performance of your NAS when you frequently access randomly placed small blocks of data. So, for example, if your NAS is running a database for something like a website, by using cache acceleration, your NAS will learn which small pieces of data are regularly used and place copies of that data in its SSD cache so that that data can be accessed more quickly. However, for large amounts of data that have to be read or written sequentially, for example a video file, using an SSD cache will have little or no impact on the performance of your NAS. So as a home user, we suspect that cache acceleration will not give us that much of a performance increase, especially as we mostly intend to use our NAS as a media server. This means that it makes more sense to purchase a third mechanical hard drive and increase the overall storage capacity of our NAS, rather than spend money on purchasing a couple of M.2 SSDs for cache acceleration. Finally, to summarize, in this video, we took a tour of our Synology NAS, identifying its key buttons, indicator lights, ports, connectors and bays. In the next video in this series, we're going to fit a couple of hard drives to our NAS and then take a look at how we will connect our NAS to our home network.